Madison College, Building Construction for the Fire Service, Week 6, Homework Problem 1. Here you see a truss type structure with axial members and it's asking us to calculate some loads. I want to take a moment and just address the axial members and what that terminology means. You can think of each of these members as being uh, like a dog bone shape with a pinned end and what that means is that they're free to pivot and the members are only available to develop forces along their axes. So like this piece from A to B, you can only operate either in tension where A is trying to move away from B, or in compression where A is trying to move towards B. It can't uh, develop any moments, uh, in other words, you know, point B, uh, this A to B component cannot pull leftward or rightward on point B because it would simply pivot uh, if it were to be displaced in that way. Uh, that simplification, that this is a purely axial structure, makes the analysis quite a bit more simple. Additionally, uh, it means that every component is loaded with purely axial force, uh, which uses the material more efficiently because each of these members is either purely in tension or purely in compression. We'll start our analysis of this structure the same way we start the analysis of all of them, which is summing forces and moments. Uh, and ac actually, in this case, probably just forces because everything's axially loaded. And I want to look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. Well, what do they equal? Well, there's this 2,000 pound force to the right. There's uh, 2,000 pound, or I'm sorry, an 8,000 pound force to the right down here. And then what on this structure is going to provide reaction to that? Well, the only point that can is point F because point F is secured to the ground. If you look at point A, it can't provide any horizontal reaction because this A to B component would simply pivot on its pinned ends. So it's going to be the X force at point F. So what do I know? Well, I know that the load on this tower is 8,000 pounds to the right. That pin at point F must be pushing leftward with a force of 10,000 pounds because it's the only thing that can provide reaction in this system. Let's think about what else uh, we know. Let's see what it's asking us to find. Uh, structures pinned at points A and F determine the external force. Uh, so we know there is no horizontal component at A. We still have yet to figure out vertical components. And we want to find the member force in members BE by method of joints. So if we think about uh, member BE. Well, member BE is going to be pulled to the right by this, uh, if you think about the reaction at point E, at joint E here, uh, the only thing that's keeping joint E from sliding to the right is the fact that uh, member BE is in tension and member BE is pulling to the left. Now, with how much force is it pulling to the left? Well, it's pulling to the left with enough force to counteract this 8,000 pound pull but also enough force to counteract the horizontal component of member CE, which has to be 2,000. So what that means is that member BE has to be under 10,000 pounds tension, uh, which makes some sense because if you think about going to joint B and pulling to the right with 10,000 pounds force and going to joint F and pushing to the left with 10,000 pounds force, you see that we get uh, an equal and opposite reaction and things cancel out. Uh, so that's the force in member BE. Now, let's think about external force and reactions. Uh, let's think about a moment about point F. So we know that this whole structure is going to want to rotate in the clockwise direction because we're pulling on it with 8,000 pounds force at point E and 2,000 pounds force at point D. So let's calculate the sum of the moments about point F. Well, what would it equal? It'd equal 8,000 pounds times 12 feet. That's 96,000 pounds. Plus, and let's think about this moment. It's a uh, clockwise moment, so it would actually be a negative number just by convention. Plus 2,000 pounds times, what's the distance from point F? F uh, 24 feet, so f uh, another negative 48,000. 48,000 foot-pounds. So the total moment is 48,000 plus 96,000, which equals negative 144,000 foot-pounds. 
Now, the question is, what counteracts that moment? Well, what counteracts that moment is member AB pulling down at point B, which tells us that uh, member AB is in tension. I'll scribble out these compression arrows we drew before when we were talking about when it may be one or the other. It is clearly in tension. And the question is, how much tension does it take to counteract that moment? Well, what's the distance here? The distance here is 16 feet. And so the moment, we're trying to figure out the moment that would create this 144,000 pounds. Well, it's negative 16 feet because that's the uh, point A is to the left of point F times some force, which I'm going to label as tension. I'm going to label it as tension in member AB equals negative 144,000 pounds, uh, pound feet, excuse me. So the question is, how do you uh, get tension AB by itself? Will you divide both sides by negative 16? And that will tell you the force in pounds that is acting in member AB. So 144,000 144, divided by 16. There's 9,000 pounds tension in, in uh, member AB. So this is 9,000 pounds. Well, if there's 9,000 pounds, if B is pulling A towards uh, itself with 9,000 pounds force, that means that the reaction at point A is 9,000 pounds vertically. In other words, A is pulling down on the structure with 9,000 pounds force, or the structure is pulling up on A with 9,000 pounds force. You could think of it however you wanted to. Well, let's think about other, what other Y components are there. Well, there are no other Y components in this, right? We, the assumption we make is that this structure is weightless, that relative to the forces at work, the weight of the structure becomes insignificant. Well, what does that mean? That means that this uh, member here between uh, BF and EF, these two members have to be developing a downward force at point F that exactly counterbalances the, downward, the upward force at point A, and that also has to be 9,000 pounds. So, and this is a downward force, so it's by convention, it is given a negative label. This uh, horizontal force is leftward, so it's given a negative label. So let's, uh, add, let's figure out the uh, things that they wanted. They wanted the force at A in the Y direction. Well, that equals 9,000 pounds, which uh, because it's in tension, is going to get a negative label. And you see that there we get that answer. The force in the x direction at point F is negative 10,000 pounds, which came from our drawing down here, right here, which matches the answer key. The force in the y direction at point uh, y, or I'm sorry, at point F, they're actually going to label this as a positive force because it is uh, acting in compression. So the force, the y direction force at point F, 9,000 pounds. And then the compression, uh, I'm sorry, the tension in member BE is 10,000 pounds. So there you see that by doing some very simple calculations with sum of moments and sums of forces, we were able to develop all of the uh, required forces that the problem asked for.